If you've been watching some of my recent videos, you'll know that I have been working with my German Shepherd puppy Star, who is now five months old and learning a number of important skills that we've been demonstrating in some of our videos. Today's topic is not about what to train, but instead how to approach training a young dog. Most people don't have hours of training time in a given day. So if we want to make progress, we have to be smart about how we work with our dogs. So here are six key ideas. Keep the session short. A typical session is probably shorter than you think. For a young puppy, this may be 60 seconds to two minutes. You never want to teach a dog any skill for more than a couple of minutes at a time. It's far better to have more frequent and short sessions than long drawn out ones that tire out your dog. This is because if you overdo it, your puppy will start to tune out and could even be put off by the training, which is something that we want to avoid. An example of this, this works especially well for puppies who need lots of activity and opportunities to interact with you throughout the day. Training and interacting with you can tire a puppy out. So time your sessions in between naps and rest periods that are part of your puppy's schedule. End on a positive and enthusiastic note. Leave your dog wanting more and quit while you're ahead and the dog is successful. If you work your dog to the point that they're tired and start making mistakes, that would be a training error. We want to maintain the dog's enthusiasm for training and stopping short of that point where your dog is bored of what you're doing is key to ensuring that. The last repetition that you do of any exercise should be a successful one because we want to leave the dog feeling confident. Plan what you're going to train before you start. Don't jump into a session without a plan. Make a list of what you are working on, select three to four things to train per session, revisit the list based on what your dog needs over time. We do this every week. Gather the tools and equipment that you'll need before you go and get your dog from their crate or exercise pen to begin working. This will allow for a seamless training session. Like humans, puppies have a limited attention span and if we are wasting time getting our things together, we're not going to create a very focused situation for the dog or for ourselves. Begin where your dog is always successful. As you train your dog new skills over time, you will raise the criteria and increase the difficulty. You may ask for longer stays or recall at a greater distance, but when you're beginning a new session for a skill you've previously worked on, start with a couple of easy requests so your dog can quickly feel successful. Frustration too early on can be discouraging, so begin with a reminder and go over something they've already mastered from a past session. For example, when I'm working with my dog in a new location, I do a few quick hand touches to gauge how much focus I have from the dog. Only if I feel that the dog is ready and focused enough will we actually proceed on to doing more training. Train consistently at the right time when your dog is motivated and interested. Dogs learn patterns, so pick consistent times to train if you can. Usually this will be around your dog's meal times, after a nap, or at the time of day that they are most active depending on your schedule. If you stick to these training times, the dog will begin to anticipate training and that will also feed their enthusiasm for engaging with you. It's important to keep the training fresh and exciting, but doing it within a predictable structure will help cue the dog to quickly shift into work mode. Always ensure that you and your dog are having fun. Remember that training has to be fun for the dog. Learning can easily become stressful because it requires that dogs think through and solve some problem that is put before them. If you suspect that your dog is not having a good time, scale back your expectations and just work on a few simple exercises before building your expectations back up. Give your dog a break for some time to roam around if you happen to be in a new environment. Knowing when to pull back is important to preserve your dog's love of learning in the long term. If you are not having fun, 
that will affect your behavior and desire to work with your dog. So make sure that you're setting yourself up to enjoy the time that you spend together. So I hope that you found these tips useful. If you would like to see more videos like this, you can support our work by subscribing to the channel and giving this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Thank you.